Hi. So, I am filming the intro to this vlog now because I will probably forget to film an intro when I start this vlog, but I have decided to do a vlog called Books That Inspired My Favourite Movies. So I have bought four books and now that they've all turned up I can film this intro. Uh, so basically the four books I have are The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger, which is obviously based on, which is obviously what inspired The Devil Wears Prada. And then I have The Body by Stephen King. Is that's gonna focus? Yep. And this is and this is what inspired Stand by Me, which is a movie that I have loved for a while, and really just wanted to read the inspiration. And it's really short for Stephen King. It's it's less than two hundred pages, so at least it'll be quick. Stephen King. And then I got Who Censored Roger Rabbit, which obviously is Roger Rabbit. And then the last one I got was Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe, which actually inspired the movie Die Hard. So yeah, this book was in, was the reason Die Hard was made and I really just want to see what this book does. Again, it's less than 300 pages, so See, pretty short, so yeah, less than 300 pages, um, yep, so three, of, two of these less than 300 pages, one of these is less than 200, and The Devil Wears Prada, um, oof, that's clocking in at 390. So yeah, three reasonably short ones, one longer-ish one. So basically, I'm going to read these books and then see which I like better, the books or the movies, or if they're on equal footing. And I may try and watch, I may re-watch the movies in this vlog as well, just to properly compare them. So I'll read the book and then watch the movie if I can find it. Anyway, this has been my quick intro to this video. And so, yeah, bye. The kid wasn't sick. The kid wasn't sleeping. The kid was dead. Okay, so I am about 20 pages into The Body by Stephen King which is the book that inspired Stand By Me. And what I've established in the 20 pages is within the first eight pages, the body, they've been asked if they want to go and find the body. And it did happen in the, in the book the same way that happened in the movie. Vern was hiding, Vern was looking for his um, coins underneath the porch and overheard them talking about this body. Also, I don't, I can't remember if it was established in the movie because it's been a while since I watched this movie, but both, te both Teddy and Chris's dads are absolute arseholes. Chris was, um, played by River Phoenix and, um, I can't remember which one Teddy is. I'll put his picture on the screen somewhere. But basically his dad is one of the big... Basically Teddy's dad is one of the biggest buttholes that I think I've ever read about. He full of, I don't want to spoil this too much. But basically, let's just say that man shouldn't be apparent to this kid. Yeah, so, again, 20 pages in, not much has happened so far. 
but um, the friendship between the four has already been established before the book takes place. They're hanging in the treehouse, and then Vern comes up asking them if they want to go and find a dead body. And yeah, I th- I know that the movie stars um Will Wheaton and River Phoenix. I can't remember who plays the other two, like main guys in this. But yeah, so far I am liking it. The twenty pages I've read. And it seems to be pretty similar to the movie. I can't remember if the um, body was mentioned that early in the movie. Because it was mentioned like eight pages in, in this book. But then again, it's a very short book. So they may need to extend the movie. Yeah, they may need to extend time for the movie. But I will keep you posted when I have read more. Bye! Hi, me again. I'm sure you're probably sick of me lying here, but hey, I don't. But hey, this is where I like to read, so this is where I read. Anyway, so I'm now about 55 pages into this book. I do like that it doesn't have like all the at all added filler that's not needed. It goes straight into the adventure of the boys going to find this dead body. And 55 pages in, I actually love the friendship between the four guys. Like, I like that this is a book that's purely just focused on the friendship and adventure that four boys are having. Because you don't see a lot of those, especially in Stephen King's work that's focused more on the horror element. I like the fact that this book focuses on the friendship between them as they make the memory of finding this body together. So yeah, that's a good thing. Um, my favourite character is still Chris, who was my favourite in the movie. He was my favourite in the movie too. And not just because he was played by River Phoenix. So yeah, that's my quick rating update. But I'm also going to... S- I'm with my support worker today and I'm going to see if maybe we can go for a bushwalk so then I can tr- so then I can truly be like these guys and yeah. and go for a walk. Yeah, cuz I figured with this vlog I'll see if I can do something connected to each book as I read each book just to add another element to this vlog. Anyway, I will catch you a bit later. I'll probably finish this tonight when, like, after my sport work goes and after I do this Father's Day, and after I do a Father's Day lunch, or, sorry, Father's Day dinner with my dad. But yeah. Catch you later. Okay, and I just finished my first read for this experiment video, which is The Body by Stephen King. Overall, I did like the, I did like the book that inspired the movie. It's, it's less than 200 pages, so I'm, so I don't think that they had to do too much leeway with this book. The only real, like, difference that I noticed is The ending of this book, it was Chris that held the gun on the... It was Chris that held the gun on the other gang at the end, but in the movie they made it... Well, Wheaton's character, Gordy. I think I appreciate... I think I actually liked the way the movie did it and made it... um, Will Wheaton's character, because Chris was always seen as the leader so it was kind of cool to see Gordy take charge. Anyway, this one's a quick reading update because there isn't really much to talk about with the differences between this this book and the movie it was based on. But it is probably exactly the era of its time. 1980s, small town. Overall, I loved it. So, the second 
Okay, let's let's move on to my se let's begin my second reading experience with Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary Wolf. Feeling frisky tonight, fellas? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> let's go. Okay, so <coughs> reading progress update number one. Wait, I probably should have grabbed the book first. Hold on. Okay. Um, so, I started Who Censored Robert, Robert Rabbit last night. I got um, 22 pages in and then fell asleep. But in this book, 22 pages is six chap is five chapters. These are very short chapters. <laughs> I'm now on chapter six, but I'm 22 pages in. So, what I like about the book is it did get straight into into it. Literally the first page is him meeting Roger Rabbit and beginning his um well actually yeah, debating whether he's gonna take the case of Roger Rabbit. And I think this all tunes around. Yeah, I think the I think this still tunes around. I don't know if it's the Looney Tunes, but there is tunes. And what I admire about Gary Wolf, who wrote this book, is on the back, he's just said, he's just said, fuck it, and said he's just going to be riding with Jessica Rabbit. He's just going to be riding with Jessica Rabbit on his lap. And I admire that kind of, I admire that kind of confidence. But yes, yeah, so I haven't read enough to know exactly how I feel about it, but I have liked, I have liked what I've read so far. It's an it's a quick read, so I do I do like that. It feels like a quick read because the short chapters means I feel like I'm making more progress quicker. And also, the book has been signed by Gary Wolf, so that's fun. Anyway, I will keep you updated on my progress as I read this book. Hi. So, oh, <laughs> I'm about to talk about Roger Rabbit and I forgot I'm wearing a <laughs> rabbit sleep mask. Anyway, um, I, f I did forget that I had the audiobook for Roger Rabbit, so thanks to the audiobook helping, I, I am now about 41% of the way through uh, Roger Rabbit. And what I can tell, parts of the story are completely different to the movie. Because, well, obviously, I figured there'd been a Looney Tunes, but the story as a whole, so far, is completely different. Like, some of the characters aren't even in it. Like, like, uh, Judge Doom, I don't think he's in it. Or he hasn't been yet. And there's a couple of other characters that I don't remember. Oh, no, actually, never mind. I don't remember them in the movie, but I'm pretty sure they were in there. But I'm pretty sure this story is going to take a completely different route than the movie did. I'm trying to avoid spoilers in this reading experience. So... I'll try not to give away too much, but yeah, I am liking it so far, and yeah, Jessica Rabbit, she's not as, like, she is more of like a, well, oh, what's the word that we can make sense on YouTube? She's not as nice to Roger as... Her, uh, as her, oh, I'm sorry, as her movie self was, so there is that, and, but yeah, I am liking it, and I will give you an update soon. Bye!
So this is just a quick update, I guess. So I've spent the night re-watching Roger Rabbit so that I can properly compare the movie to the book. And I forgot how much I enjoy that movie. It is just a delight. It's funny and it always puts me in a good mood. Okay, book update. Um, I am now 53% of the way through according to um, my script audio. And I do actually really, I am actually really enjoying this book. Which is good. I think that there's... There is definitely huge differences between the book and the movie. But I like both takes on the story because the book has a much darker take than the movie does, but I'm actually kind of enjoying that. I'm still trying not to give too much away in the books, but it does have all the same characters. It has Valiant, it has Roger, it has Jessica Rabbit. The tunes are more comic strip cartoons rather than the American show cartoons, so they're not like Betty Boop, Donald Duck, Roadrunner. They're, yeah, it's more like comic book strips, like, um, what are some more comic, comic strips, like, Hagar the Horrible, um, I'm, I'm really not good with old comic book strip. That's my difference of how the tunes work. And also, another difference is Eddie, like, Eddie doesn't really have, doesn't really have as much of a grudge against tunes as he did in the movie, because in the movie he had a grudge against tunes because one called his brother, but in the book, he, it doesn't really, it's not really clear whether he likes tunes or not, like, I still can't, to be honest, I still can't tell, but I do, but I know that it's not the same route. That if he did, that if he did hate tunes, it's not the same reason. So anyway, yeah, I'm really enjoying the book. The movie is still is still lovely and always a good time. And I'll probably get the audiobook smash the rest of the audiobook smashed out tomorrow. And. If I don't finish it tonight, I will probably finish it tomorrow because I've got about an hour to go. And yeah, so I will catch up with you then. Bye! Okay. Okay, now that that's done. <laughs> Hi. So, I'm here to give my final thoughts on Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary Wolf. Now, I did actually quite enjoy this book. Damn it. I wrote notes on my phone and I left it in the other room. Be right back. Hey. So, anyway, like I said, like I was saying, I I finished Who Censored Roger Rabbit. I actually finished it a couple of days ago, but I was quite busy and only had a chance to film my final thoughts now. Okay. So the main differences that I noticed in Who Censored Roger Rabbit is almost the whole plot in the, in this book is different to what it was in the movie. Like, the main characters are the same, but that's about it. The only, like, main characters in this book that are in the movie are um, Valiant, Roger and Jessica Rabbit. The rest of them? Nowhere in the book. So yeah, that's one difference. The next difference is in the book it's more comic strip characters than it is Looney than it is like American cartoons like the Looney Tunes. So yeah, that's different. I don't know which version I prefer. I think because I grew up with the Looney Tunes, I do prefer that. 
version as the characters in it, but I did like the way that they incorporated the comic strip characters in it. Um, oh yeah, also in the book, which is not mentioned in the movie, um, cartoon character is able to create doppelgangers of themselves to do, to be their stunt doubles in the movie. They last long enough for the shot and then they're gone. So, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Oh, camera's flashing at me. Oh, well. Anyway, um, yeah, another difference is in the movie, cartoon characters can only be permanently killed by using the dip that Judge Doom showed at the end. But in the book, Um, Roger Rabbit, as well as another character, but I'm not that I'm not going to spoil, are killed by a bullet from a gun, and it actually seems to stick as a kill, as a kill. So yeah, that's that is one big difference, and also um. In the book, the only way that the Toon characters can talk is with the comic book's speech bubbles above their head, which I think is actually quite accurate because it's how they talk in comic books, so by default, of course, that's going to be how they talk. And they need to, yeah, and they need to finish the um, comic, the speech bubble to be able to talk to people. Mainly the conversation between Valiant and all the characters. So that's interesting. And Judge Doom is another book. He's completely just written for the movie. And Jessica Rabbit in the book hates Roger. Like, hates Roger Rabbit with, like, has no intention to stay with him or get back together with him. It's pure hatred. And, yeah, so that relationship is pretty much, um, fit, is pretty much a complete write off. And the last thing that's a difference is in the book. Eddie Valiant doesn't have a brother that was killed by a toon. He's just someone who hates who hates the char who hates the characters of this world. And I don't quite fully understand why. But I just know that he doesn't like the toons, and he only stays on the case because he likes Roger, Roger more than he likes the other people in the game. <laughs> he likes Roger way more than he likes the other people. So yeah. Anyway, that's the main differences that I picked up between the book and the movie. As to which one I prefer, I like them both, but for very different reasons. The movie is a light-hearted take on it, so that's always just... It always just cheers me up when I watch it. The book is actually quite is actually quite a good mystery novel, and it's a darker take on the story, which I also appreciate. So I wonder if there will actually be one where I outrightly prefer one over the other. But at the moment, I've both of the books that I've finished, I have liked just as much as each other, even if I. Do you like the movies a little bit more? Okay, the next one I'm going to tackle is Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. So let's, um, well, for you guys, it's flash forward for me. It's flashback, oh, shut up, to my opening thoughts on this book.
Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. Okay, so... My... Opening thoughts for... Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. This is the move. This is the book that inspired Die Hard. I'm only a chapter in because it's late and I want to go to sleep. But I wanted to get my opening thoughts out first. Um, there is one difference right at the beginning. His name isn't um, uh, McLean. His name in this. His name isn't John McLean. His name is Leland. I haven't learned his. Um, first name yet, but he's going by Leland in this, so that's interesting. But yeah, so that, so yeah, one judge in, and that's already the main difference, is his name's Leland. And he's, and he's going to visit his daughter for Christmas, not his ex-wife like it was in the movie. So yeah, those are two main differences I've noticed so far. It was an interest. It was a good first chapter, I will admit, and I can't wait to read more. I'll update you soon. Bye. Okay, this is. Oh, whoops. Okay, this is not the most flattering camera angle, but this is what we're doing anyway. So I am now, um, forty-seven pages or five chapters into Nothing Lasts Forever. And, again, he has ne yeah, he's now arrived at a Christmas party, and it's literally just about to get into the action part of it. But I'm, pr I'm pretty sure, I don't know, but one sentence made me pretty sure that the uh, main character in this book, who is Joe Leland in this, I finally figured out his first name. Um, already knows one of the terrorists that I think was Alan Rickman's character in the movie. So that kind of, so if that's true, that kind of ruins the fun of that element where Alan Rickman, where he was just messing with Alan Rickman and he had no idea who he was. But I think it'll still be good. Anyway, I am taking a pause from this. I'm going to, um, wait, is it lunchtime? I think it's nearly lunchtime, so I'm going to um, take a break from reading, start watching the movie of Die Hard, so I can properly compare it, I'm going to watch Die Hard again, and I'll probably make some lunch, and then I'll get back in, then I'll get back into reading this probably. Alright, so catch you in a bit, bye. Okay. I'm still watching the movie. I'm not that far in, but I did want to note. I forgot how much I love Alan Rickman's character in this movie. His villain entrance. Awesome. His, his character in general. I really love. So that's why I'm really hoping that this book doesn't mess up that the love I have for that character. But it'll also help me figure out if it's Alan, if the if the character's bad in this and I liked it in this, maybe it's just because it's Alan Rickman. I'm not sure, but yeah, I just had to gush about the, about how awesome Alan Rickman's character is in this and how much I love the um, rivalry taunting between Alan Rickman's character and Bruce Willis's character. I just think it's great. Okay, now I'm out. Hi. So, another reading update. I am now um, 102 pages into this. About halfway through. Honestly, yes, there's a lot of action, but kind of bored. That could just be because I'm reading the action instead of seeing it, but this book isn't living up to the hype of the movie. So, 
Maybe I have the first one that I didn't like as much as the movie. Anyway, um, yeah, the character that Alan Wickman played is not in this much. They've had a few conversations. They've had like about one and a half conversations at this point. So yeah, he's kind of, he might be a little bit more in the second half of the book, but so far, I am liking the book, but comparing it to the movie, it's not actually as good at it, as good as it. But yeah, so I'll... Keep you put I'll keep you posted. See where I get at, see where I get at this and I'll be back with either reading progress or final thoughts. Bye. Okay, and I am back with my final thoughts of Nothing Lasts Forever. Now I did like this book, but this is the first one where I've definitely liked the movie more than the book. Because, yeah, but, but my god, did this one have a darker root with the ending than the movie did. Yeah. The, uh, the writer definitely went a darker, darker route than the director did. But anyway, I have my comparison notes. And I don't have a lot of battery left on this phone, so we're going to do this quickly. So... The, one of the first differences, well, the main differences in this book are, in the book, his name isn't John McClane, it is Joe Leland. And the other main difference is, he's not visiting his wife, he is, he is widowed, and visiting his daughter. And he already knows the head of this group. The character was played by Alan Rickman in the movie. He already knew who he was before this started. And the main guy's name is Anton Gruber, not Hans. Or he was also known as Little Tony, apparently. Anyway, those are the main differences. There wasn't really a lot of differences between the book and the movie. But I, but I still prefer the movie version of this one. And the last one for this reading vlog is The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. So, let's see my journey for this one. Alright everyone, gird your loins! Okay, and I have started my last book for this reading experiment, The Devil Wears Prada. I'm not very far in. I finished my last book and then had to do and then had to do stuff for the day and now I am exhausted. So Yeah, I think I should get it done within the next couple of days and I can finally wrap up this vlog. But um in the um about eighteen pages that I've read so far, um the main character's name is Salandra. But, um, I don't think her boyfriend Nate is in this, because she did mention a boyfriend who was named Alex, but they broke up, and she's staying at a friend's house, so I really don't think Nate or the, bo or the boyfriend of any kind is in this book. So, I don't know, there's not much in it, there's not much in it, but, yeah. Uh, we did have a bit of a flashback at the start of, um, of Miranda not being, uh, of her as Miranda's assistant, and now it's flashed back to the interview, or getting ready for the interview. But either way, there isn't many differences so far. There is um, no Nate, so there's no relationship to ruin, and yeah, 
Yeah, I might be wrong and there is a boyfriend in this, but right now the only boyfriend that's been mentioned, they've gone their separate ways and his name isn't, and if it's the same boyfriend, his name isn't Nate, his name is Andrew. Oh, sorry, not Andrew, Alex. His name is Alex. Anyway, I will keep you posted. Bye. Okay, so I'm doing a quick check-in because I might forget later on today, probably. But I don't know when the last update I had for you was, but I am now 179 pages into this book. This is the f this is the first book of ow. This is the first book of the four that has actually been significantly different to the movie. So many differences. I'll get into like the proper differences at the end of like in my final thoughts update. But I think this is the f like I'm I am enjoying this, but not as much as the others, and definitely not as much as the movie. But God, the the main thing I hate about it is there are so many like offensive stereotypes in this book. There's the gay stereotypes. There's the um, different uh, sorry. yeah. There's the gay stereotypes. There's like Italian stereotypes and all the like for and a bunch of foreigner stereotypes. So that's been insulting, I guess. But I was I was wrong about what I said. But Alex, they are still together. I don't know if I said this in that update, so I'm just going to say it again. Yeah. Um, the boyfriend's name is Alex. They are still together. But they don't live together. And, Emil and Emily is actually, is actually kind of nice to Andy in this... In the book. And she does actually generally help her or want to help her. So anyway, that's my update for now. And I'll probably smash out the rest of the book and just give you my final wrap up. Bye. Okay, I'm just gonna record this again because for some reason the video was filmed the wrong way. But I am now um, nearly finished this book. I'm 278 pages in. I've got about 100 pages to go, I'll probably smash it out tomorrow. But what I was saying in this update was that I'm not really liking the main character in this book. She actually does nothing but complain about her job that she can easily quit if she wants to, but she's choosing to stay and then just whines. And also, um, she seems to like look down on most of the people that she works with. She just like, she always has like sarcastic remarks or thinks badly of them, even though most of the time they're just being nothing, they're just being nice to her. So that's a bit off putting. But I'm enjoying the book well enough because I like all of the other characters. Miranda's character, while well, she still treats the two. While well, she still treats Emily and Andrea a bit badly, she does. She is um, a better like mother to her children, and unless something is going to change in the last hundred pages, she, her husband seems pretty happy. Her husband seems pretty happy. So, yeah, that's interesting. They've changed up Miranda's character a little bit. But they've also made Andrew's character like quite whiny and doing nothing but complaining, which I'm not liking. So, yeah, we'll see if anything changes in the last hundred. But I think my next update will be my final thoughts. So hopefully, it's what hopefully I can get this clip up this time. All right, I'll check in with you guys probably tomorrow. Bye. Okay, and I have finally finished. The last book for this vlog, The Devil Wears Prada. I would go over the. Oh, I'll get that out of shot. I would go over the differences, like the differences between the book and the movie with this one, 
But this one was so different, it's probably easier to just go over what was the same in the movies. Because this one is so far off what the what the movie did. For one thing, in this, Emily and Andy actually get along, like the whole like the whole movie. And the ending bit with pa with Paris and the way that she got the new job is not how it went in this. And oh my god, the main character in this book. I did not sympathize with Andy at all. She did nothing but complain and did not try to do her job at all. So yeah, I didn't like this book nearly as many, no, sorry. I didn't like this book nearly as much as the movie. It's a, sol it's a solid three stars, but that's all I can give it. So now, yeah, now that I've done this, we can finally wrap up this video. Okay, so overall, the experiment concluded that so sometimes the book can be just as good. And overall, we have, sorry, they're all in my, aside from this one, they're all in my library, so I'm just going to put them on the screen. We have two that, are just, that I like to just put as a movie. One where the movie, where the movie was a bit, where the movie was a bit better. And one where the movie was a hundred percent better. But overall, this was a fun reading experiment, and I will see you in the next one.